Hey there. And you're going to really love this episode because you've all written in saying, please tell us how can we do medicine in UK? So we've got just the right person for you. So allow me to welcome Ananya Ramgopal to the show. Ananya, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So let me quickly ask you, mm -hmm. you're in your second year now. I'm just going into my second year, yeah. In medical school in University of Birmingham. Yeah, in the UK. Fantastic. Okay. So let's talk about the application process right away. Mm -hmm. They're probably in high school wanting to do this beautiful course that you're doing. How does the application process work? Personally, I think the UK application process is quite simple. It all boils down to UCAS, which is basically a forum where you can apply to five uh, universities in the UK. Um, in the case of medicine, you can only apply to four medical universities okay. and one of the universities you sort of have to use as a backup and okay. apply to some other course. Okay. Unlike the US where you have to write multiple essays for your different universities, UCAS only has one essay right. and you use that for all your applications, including your non-med one, which oh, is quite okay. surprising. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they know that you're basically applying for, the, uh, for medicine and that any other course is your backup, so they'll take that into account. But okay. usually that's not too bad. And usually these colleges on their website give you an indicative grade uh, range that they're looking at. So how do I choose my five colleges is my question. Right. They should all tell you what kind of uh, ninth and 10th grade marks they're looking for and um, definitely what predicted grades they want from you for okay. your 12th grade. Okay. But you also have to take into consideration um, supplementary exams that you have to take for medicine right, in right, the UK. Right. So that factors in as well. Okay, so tell us about these supplementary exams. Which are the ones they need to take? For your application for medicine, you have you can do one of two exams or the both of them. One of them is called the UK CAT, which is applicable for most of the med schools in the UK. Right. Um, and then you have the BMAT, which is more select. So um, Cambridge and Oxford and stuff like that will ask for BMAT. Okay. But there are some other universities, about five or six, that ask for the BMAT. Okay. Um, and so you do these during your 12th grade and unlike the SAT, you can only do them once. Oh, so it's quite okay. a, it's oh, okay. stressful. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you, most universities require you to do one of these two exams before you apply. Okay. And is there like an English language, language test as well? Yes, you also have to do um, the IELTS. Now, it's, it's a little blurry on whether or not it's required, but I think it's a safe bet to do it. Okay. And everyone I knew who applied did do it, just in case. Tell me, in that application process, that essay that you spoke about, the one essay, mm -hmm. uh, what are the components of that essay? What must they definitely put in there? So, um, I think the most important thing they look at in medicine is um, whether or not you've been exposed to like clinical settings or have just done any hands-on work so you know the kind of lives that doctors live and you know how challenging it is so you know what you're getting into so it's important to either have a volunteering experience or an internship at a hospital okay. that's one thing you should definitely play up in your personal statement what you gain personally from it the nature of the experience yeah okay and connecting that to your goals is there anything else in the statement that they should talk about it's also definitely good to talk about your extracurriculars so say if you're on the student council or you the um, captain of your basketball team or something like that related but it's important to try and make it connect to medicine in some way so mm -hmm. say you want to do sports medicine right um, then then that's a good thing to bring out um, often they'll ask you about your leadership skills so it's good to talk about being on the student cap uh, student council and stuff like that right and unlike the US you can't talk about why you want to choose a particular college because like you said the application is for multiple colleges. exactly so um, what you can do is as an international student specifically is actually it's good to talk about why UK specifically. So right. don't talk about a specific university, but definitely say why you're interested in studying in the UK. Okay. Talk about the NHS because it's an amazing system, but definitely talk about why you're interested in medicine and make sure that comes, comes shining through. Right. So talking about why they should be interested in UK, mm -hmm. and you mentioned the NHS, but what could be some of the other exciting reasons they should be in the UK? The thing about the UK is you have a great time as well, along yes. with studying very hard. Yeah, so with medicine, you have a lot of contact hours. I have nearly 30 hours a week in okay. lectures. Okay. So it's very rigorous, but also it gives you a lot of downtime. Um, you have huge class sizes and stuff like that, but you also have um, small group activities, which make sure you can really engage in the subject later yeah. on. The good thing about the US, uh, UK versus say the US, is that you have 
it's five years. You don't have to do four years of pre-med and then four years of med. Oh yes. It's just course. a five-year course. Okay. So it's a lot shorter. It's a lot yeah. less expensive in yes. that way as well yes. for an international student, especially. And talking about work opportunities as you complete, I know for some of the other programs, the non-medical programs, mm -hmm. it's not very easy to stay back in the UK and work. Right. But how does it work when it comes to medicine? So the thing with medicine, um, when I was applying, I talked to a lot of people who were like, say in the fifth year and stuff like that. So they were looking at uh, working and uh, a lot of them have been able to stay on in the UK and are now working there. Oh, nice. So because it's medicine and obviously there's such a dearth of doctors yes. in the NHS, yes. they're always looking to rec recruit more and obviously if you've done your schooling uh, or your med school in the UK, it makes more sense. It's Fabulous. And then from there you could possibly even move to some of the other Commonwealth countries. Yeah, definitely. Um, your degree is widely recognized all around the world if you study in the UK. So it's, it is very easy. A lot of people move to Australia, people do the test in the US and go there as well. It's easy and obviously all around the Euro all, all around Europe, which might change, but yes, yes. But as of now, yeah, that yeah, is good. So I've got some great reasons why all of you want to be there and I know you already want to be there, but I'm just telling you them myself. <laughs> so it's got a shorter degree. Mm -hmm. It's based in English. It's a great place yeah, to course. live in and you could possibly work there and you could work somewhere mm -hmm. else as well exactly. equally. Uh, okay, so Ananya, coming back to this application process, mm -hmm. we discussed the UCAS, we discussed the SA and we spoke about sending that in. Now tell me, is there anything else along with that that they send in um, and the scores, the exam scores that you mentioned? Right, um, so along with your um, SA, you'll also have your recommendation letters from your teachers. So it's best to get them from a relevant subject teacher obviously right. so chemistry or biology is recommended I got mine from my chemistry teacher so tell me we also know that the UK typically does have an interview process uh, for admission so how does that work for the medical side most schools will have interviews unfortunately India isn't a center for interviews for most universities mm -hmm. so in my case I had to travel to the UK twice to do give two different interviews oh, in the middle of my 12th oh, grade okay. so okay. it's it's not ideal but yes. um, to be honest, my inter the interviews were my favorite part of the process. Okay. I absolutely lo lo loved them. So uh, the medical interviews are structured in this format called uh, multiple mini interviews, so mm. MMIs. So instead of having like a panel and you're the only one speaking to them, which can obviously be daunting, they have multiple stations. And um, so say six to eight stations and one person at each desk. And you go rotate around the room from station to station. And each station has a particular question they're going to ask you. You have about six six minutes or so at each station and then a gong rings oh, and you have to move to the next. God, okay. So you're filled with a room of people rotating around, okay. going from station to station. And I think it's quite interesting. Like some of the questions they ask you are it's none of it is knowledge based. They will okay. not ask you specific scientific questions. Right. But um, say one of my favorite questions was um, I was given a list of patients on um, an organ donor list. Okay. And your you have you get to know about like the severity of their condition and stuff like that and you have to decide who gets the organ oh interesting so it's really looking at your judgment more than mm. anything else and mm. it's i found it really interesting right talk us through some of the other questions that you faced on the stations i talked about the bmat exam so one of the stations was to go through your essay and you have to critique it yourself so say talk about um the faults in it and talk about why you what you did well in the essay so again critical thinking and all of that. Mm, mm, mm. Um, another one I really liked was um, they asked me where I saw myself in 10 years, three mm, goals for myself. Mm, mm. So obviously you, start, you have to be as uh, well-rounded about it as possible. So you'll talk about um, your personal goals, your professional goals, your academic mm, goals, whatever mm, it is that you mm, see. Mm. So it's interesting, it just really makes you think. Yeah. And these mini stations with lots of people circulating probably is a stress reliever because rather than having yourself alone in mm -hmm. one room with a panel, you've Definitely. got a lot of other people. Yeah, so you also have like 10-15 minutes before the interview where you're all sitting together with all the other people right. who are interviewing and it's, a, it's good, it's an icebreaker, you get to talk. I was nervous coming in but after those 10 minutes, I, it, it all dissipated really. Okay. So does everyone who apply get an interview call or is there a selection at that stage? So no, that's de definitely not the case. So they will look at your, obviously your personal statement, your grades and your exam scores, these uh, supplementary exam scores. Depending on that, you'll get an interview. So sometimes just getting that interview call could mean the most. Exactly. Yeah. So you're most likely yeah. to get in there. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Coming back a little to subject choices, since you mentioned that it could be your chemistry teacher perhaps mm -hmm. who writes your recommendation. Now I'm looking at high school kids. Right. Typically in India, when we think of medicine, we think of doing physics, chemistry and biology mm -hmm. in our 11th and 12th standard. 
but when it comes to an international schooling mm -hmm. what are the kind of subjects that you think we need to choose so um, i did ib where it's highly it's not recommended at all that you take all three sciences it's classified as a non regular diploma right then. right so i dropped physics a, a month in to mm -hmm. my 11th grade mm -hmm. and it's fine cuz the uk requires you to have only two sciences and surprisingly enough biology is not required uh, so you okay. can have as long as you have chemistry okay um it's fine so you can take chemistry and physics and still apply for medicine and get in and it's okay. just fine interesting so chemistry at higher level necessary uh mostly there are a few universities in the uk that will do not require chemistry at higher level oh. but it's highly recommended that you have it so anna you spoke about the five year program and how it was a great benefit to be in this five year program as compared to doing a pre med mm -hmm. and then a med in the us but post this five year program is there like an internship or a residency that you do there right so before i come to that i just want to say that it is not always a five year program so um most of the london universities and oxford and cambridge and stuff like that do have six years programs oh, okay and that's because you have you take a year out of medicine to do an intercalated degree which means you get another degree so say a bsc in the middle oh, and okay. that could be in like a, a science of your choosing it's basically a, a year you take to do research oh, and nice. that looks good on your application later when you're applying to be a junior doctor so you've got 5 years or 6 years yeah and then from there so then from there what you do is your 2 years of foundation year which is sort of like your internship or something in the U US so essentially you're a junior doctor during those 2 years and you still do not have to specialize um you specialize at the end of those 2 years okay. and based on what you specialize in you'll have a variable number of years of training ahead of you right so certain courses like maybe a surgery program might be a longer program will be long or if you're a gp it'll be shorter exactly talking about the main 5 years could mm -hmm. you take us through how this is structured for you essentially your first 2 years are what they call preclinical years right where they pump you full of all the knowledge you need to know okay. essentially okay so those all are like classroom years. years yeah it's um, you're mostly in uh, lectures right and small group activities and then you'll have like dissections and stuff right. like that as well but then um from your third year onwards you're placed entirely in hospitals oh, so in okay. your first two years while you will be placed possibly placed in like the gp surgery every two weeks or something like that like it is in birmingham um you don't have that much clinical contact but from third year onwards you're entirely on placement hmm. and every 12 weeks in birmingham they rotate your specialty right. so you're shadowing different doctors and you're exposed to more specialties that right. way right I'm looking at the cost of this program because that's another thing that right. worries some people and and are there any scholarships at all You do get merit based scholarships but it's you they will never cover your entire amount it'll right. be like a fraction of your mm. um mm. tuition fee So what is the cost per year over the 5 years So it differs for your clinic preclinical years it's about 19 18000 pounds pounds okay and but then your uh Clinical. clinical years it goes up to like 29 30 per annum so oh, it's okay. a lot it is expensive but you're saying the ability to work there and earn perhaps in pounds could be yeah i mean initially obviously you're making a pittance you're a junior doctor yes. um but i think once you reach like a consultant level you're making a fortune so so ananya that was a fabulous overview you gave us about how to study in uk mm -hmm. but i also understand you applied to check to the check republic and to ireland as well right so what is that application process look like So um firstly I would definitely recommend you have a safety net because getting into the UK, UK medicine they have a very few number of um, international seats um but I did apply to Czech, Czech Republic and Ireland and they both have great medical courses Charles University in Czech Republic is renowned worldwide it, they have courses in English um obviously you will need to know the native native language by the time you start practicing right because but, of patient interaction obviously but um i think they teach you that during your course as well okay. so it's all right and the application process uh, mm -hmm. for that is it very different from how the uk application process is it is different in terms of you have to go most likely you'll have to go to check republic and write their exam because india doesn't have a center okay um so that's an issue but the exam is pretty easy in fact the second faculty if i remember correctly you don't even need to write the exam if you've got all three of your subject sats done mm -hmm. and you've got i think above 650 in all of them or something like that okay. not quite sure what the number is but um if you've got that you don't even have to write the exam okay 
and so that it's quite easy to get in. And the cost of studying in Czech Republic is a be, fraction yeah. of what it is in the UK. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that could be very attractive for Indian students. Definitely. So is there any website that they could look up for this? Right. So you can look into cuni.cz. That that'll give you all the information you need about the five faculties of medicine okay. in Czech, Czech Republic. Most of them are in Prague, but I think there's one that is a little far away from Prague okay. in a smaller city. And uh, that will give you all the requirements in terms of um, what tests they require, um, what subjects they require, um, your uh, interview process, all of that. All so of that is all there. Yeah. And looking at Ireland as another option because that's where you applied as well. Mm -hmm. So how does that process work? Though? For international students, they have this thing called Atlantic Bridge. Again, you can look at their website. Um, it's similar to the UCAS because it combines all of the um, medical universities in Ireland and you can apply to all of them using one single application. Okay. So again, you'll have your um, essays and your recommendations and your grades, uh, transcripts. And um, yeah, you send that in. The thing, the thing is, it's sort of like a first come, first serve sort of thing. Okay. So whichever university likes you, they will pick you and then you're sort of out of the run, out of the running to... For the others. For the others. Oh, okay. So that's an issue. So if you want one more than the other, it's prob more than the others, it's probably best to go for to apply to that one separately. Outside of this Outside Atlantic of this Bridge Atlant Atlantic Bridge, yes. Oh, interesting. There's different ones. There's Trinity Coll College Dublin, there's University College Dublin, there's a university in Galway, there's one in Cork. There's, there's, so there's five or six in Ireland. And is Ireland again much cheaper than the UK? So it's obviously nothing like Czech Republic, but it right. is, I understand, cheaper than the UK. Okay. Yeah, but thank you so much. I thank you for having super me. Super advice, and they're all going to benefit hugely from it. And we wish you all the best for the rest of your program. Thank you so much. I'll need it. <laughs> thank you for being with us.